Welcome back to another episode of What's in the Night Sky for February 2024, and it is the sixth year anniversary of Witten's. 72 episodes starting back in February 2018. Feels crazy to say, but thank you guys so much for all of the support over all of these years and enabling me to live my dream job. I can't thank you enough. And I do have some exciting news. We just found two signed limited edition hardback copies of my book, Photographing the Night Sky. These were limited edition. We only sold a thousand. We had some extras to cover anything that was damaged and uh, some gifts for family and friends and stuff. But we've just found two in the warehouse. So we're going to give them away. And there's two different ways you can win. The first is that we're going to pick one random person who orders a book from my website or PhotoView's website during the month of February to receive a signed hardback instead of an unsigned softback. And the second way is to enter the raffle. So just follow the link in the video description down below or I'll try and put a QR code on the screen. And then all you have to do is answer the question, who owns YouTube? And then entries cost one pound each. You could pay in any currency. You could enter no matter where you are in the world. And you can enter as many times as you like. And there's also bonuses for buying multiple tickets. So if you buy two entries, you get a free entry. If you buy five tickets, you get three free extra entries. And if you buy 10 tickets, you get six extra free entries. So head on over to the link in the description or scan the QR code and enter the raffle to win a copy, a signed copy, a limited edition hardback of photographing the night sky. Anyway, enough shameless self-promotion. Let's start with a general look at the Northern Hemisphere night sky. As darkness falls, the winter circle asterism of bright stars is already well above the horizon in the south-southeast, and they steadily arch across the south. Now remember, when an object crosses the meridian, the imaginary line that runs from south to north, that's when an object is at its highest point in the night sky. And the higher an object is, the better it is to view, because that's the highest it's going to get above any light pollution or humidity, and you're also looking through a shorter path of Earth's atmosphere to see it. So it's a really good time of year to pull out the Star Trekker, the telescope or a telephoto lens and track some of the wonderful targets in this region of the night sky. So there is of course the wonderful Orion Nebula in Orion. Not far away next to the star Alnitak in Orion's belt is the Flame and Horsehead Nebulae. In Taurus we have the most famous star cluster, the Pleiades, another great beginner target. And if your camera is astro modified for hydrogen alpha light, a couple of great targets are the California Nebula near the foot of Perseus and the Rosette Nebula found in the modern constellation Monoceros the Unicorn. Once the winter circle has crossed the south, it begins to sink into the southwest, and then it's possible to grab a Milky Way arch panorama facing west, and you might spot the zodiacal light underneath the arch as well. I'll talk more about that next month as it becomes prominent around the equinox. Now whilst most people will be distracted by the bright stars of the winter circle like mosquitoes to a light, don't forget to turn around and get some Milky Way action in the northwest. You'll find the Cygnus region of the Milky Way low on the horizon, it's a bright fuzzy region of the Milky Way, and above that is the Cassiopeia region, which I captured last month in La Palma, and you'll also notice some other gems in there as well, like the spiral galaxy Andromeda. Thanks to my Astro modified camera, I was able to pick up some nice hydrogen alpha reds in the California Nebula, the Heart and Soul Nebulae, and the Flaming Star and Tadpole Nebulae as well. So don't sleep on this region of the Milky Way. In the Southern Hemisphere, the Winter Circle is known as the Southern Summer Circle, and it's found high in the north as darkness falls, and for the Southern Hemisphere, these objects are at their highest when they cross the meridian in the north. So all of the deep sky targets I mentioned still apply for you guys in the south as well. Just capture them when they cross in the north. Similar to the northern hemisphere, the winter circle will then sink into the west and depending on your latitude, you may be able to get a Milky Way arch panorama facing southwest. The further south you are in latitude, the more difficult it becomes to do this without having heavy distortion at the top of the panorama. But if we take a look in the south this month, there's a bonus surprise for our friends down under. So at the start of the night, 
It is a fuzzy region of the Milky Way in the south-southeast, where you'll find the bright stars of the famous Crux constellation and the guiding stars Alpha and Beta Centauri. But as we approach the pre-dawn hours, the Milky Way core rises in the east. Those of us in the Northern Hemisphere will have to wait at least another month to get a decent view of the Milky Way core, so we'll be looking forward to seeing the photographs from our Southern Hemisphere friends this month. As for the planets this month, Jupiter can be found in the constellation Aries, starting the night high but sinking towards the western horizon to set shortly after local midnight. It will be the brightest object in the sky after the moon. Venus rises in the east during dawn where it will become the brightest object in the sky after the moon. Mars shortly follows after Venus and they will both come to conjunction on the morning of the 22nd. So keep an eye out for those two in the east if you're an early riser but you will need a very clear view of the horizon. Full moon this month falls on the 24th, and it's known as the snow moon. No prizes for guessing why. It's also a micro moon, which is the opposite of a super moon. So the moon will be close to apogee, which is its farthest distance from Earth on its elliptical orbit. So it will appear slightly smaller and less brighter than normal. Although this is not really noticeable to the naked eye anyway, you could easily show someone a rising micromoon, tell them it's a supermoon, and I'm sure they'll believe you. And sadly, that's all I've got for you this month, guys. Now on to the monthly photography competition. For those of you that are new here, every month I set a target subject or theme for people to photograph for a chance to win a prize. If submitted via x.com, use the hashtag Wittens on your post. But if uploading on Instagram, please add a tag for at Wittens underscore Alan Wallace on your images. It's not enough to add a mention in the description of your post, it has to be a tag on the photo. Anyway, third place wins a copy of my Astro Workflow Lightroom presets, second place wins a Constellation hoodie, and first place wins a copy of my book Photographing the Night Sky. Last month's theme was the Winter Circle, and here are the winners. So in third place was Sea White Photos with this impressive winter Milky Way Arch panorama above Three Cliffs Bay, one of my favourite places in my home country, Wales. I love the symmetry between the foreground and the sky, and the image just has a great flow. You find yourself enjoying all of the details in every area of the image, including the winter circle in the upper left corner. In second place was Aaron Jenkins with this stunning image of the winter circle emerging from behind some cloud above a rugged seascape scene in Madeira. I love the way the foreground draws you in, you almost feel like you're walking through the image. And I really love the colours and the overall edit, so well done, I'm sure it wasn't an easy image to capture. And in first place was this eerie scene from Motley Collection in Poland. Something about this image just gave me the chills, it has such a spooky character and I love that the winter circle just fills the sky. It's some nice hydrogen alpha detail there and the reds really work well on the blue backdrop. There's something about this image just caught my eye and it's kind of hard to fully explain why I found it so interesting, but amazing job. This month, let's go with any deep sky object in the winter circle. If you don't have a telephoto lens or a star tracker, you can maybe perhaps try stacking loads of images from a 50mm lens or something. But hopefully looking for some of Orion's jewels, maybe the Rosette Nebula or California Nebula. Let's see what you can do. What are you most looking forward to this month? Let me know in the comments down below. Hit subscribe if you haven't already, because my Cheminid Meteor Shower vlog is coming soon. But for now, check out this video and get some Star Tracker inspiration for this month. As always, if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.